The last thing respected wildlife photographer Catherine Frankovich expected to see while walking in the woodland of Dade County, just outside of Miami, Florida, was a gray alien entity. One that disappeared into some kind of hidden alien base in the viney vegetation of the area. However, according to the account she related to veteran UFO researcher Linda Melton Howe, that's exactly what happened. Howe had read of the encounter in a paranormal magazine named Unknown and had contacted Frankovich. According to what Frankovich told Howe one sunny day in May 1992, she and her two dogs were walking in a particularly secluded area of woodland in Dade County. Far from the bustling city of Miami, just a few miles away, here was peaceful, quiet, with only the slightest, most delicate of sounds to be heard. She continued on into this tranquility, putting more and more distance between herself and the modern world as she did so. Then, from out of nowhere, a sudden cracking sound, like somebody was chopping down a tree with a large ax, disturbing the serenity, and it brought the photographer and her two dogs to a sudden stop. Frankovich turned to face the sound and was shocked to see a humanoid figure, approximately five feet tall, with gray pink skin, wearing a tight fitting metallic suit. Particularly startling to Frankovich was the large size of the figure's head, which she recalled as being hugely out of proportion to the rest of its body. Even more disturbing were the two large black almond shaped eyes, eyes that had no pupils. She could make out a mouth, nose and ears, all of which conversely appeared dramatically smaller than they should have been. She went on to describe how the figure appeared to have an upper torso and lower torso that didn't quite match. She claimed that the upper torso was thin framed with particularly thin arms with little muscle tone to them. She did note though that the strange creature had five fingers on each hand and a thumb. It also had a strange pot belly on an otherwise slender upper section. The lower part of the creature's body appeared to be completely the opposite. Frankovich would recall that the figure's thighs were overdeveloped and that it had calves that looked like the legs of a well-trained athlete. The feet, however, were small, almost too small for the other dimensions of the body. Frankovich remained where she was, staring at the creature, which in turn stared back at her. She noticed that her two dogs were laying calmly beside her, as if in some kind of trance. Although she remained calm and tried to take in as much detail as she could, she would tell Linda Moulton Howe that she felt utterly shell-shocked at what she was looking at. This stare-off lasted for several moments. Then the creature turned and ran. As soon as it did so, Frankovich ran after it. She would later compare the way it moved to a gazelle, stating that it would leap as if on a pogo stick with very little effort. She estimated that each leap covered around three feet of ground. As she ran after the bounding figure, her two dogs ran with her. She almost caught up with it, but it somehow managed to remain just ahead of her. This pursuit continued for quite a distance, equivalent, Frankovich would recall, to several city blocks. The creature was heading deep into a vined area where, out of nowhere, a tunnel appeared in the vegetation. The creature disappeared into this tunnel and Frankovich came to a sudden stop, as did her two dogs. She was immediately hit with what she described as a wall of stench that she recalled was a nauseous combination of formaldehyde and sulfuric acid. As she stared at the opening of the tunnel, although she couldn't explain how, she sensed that there were more of the creatures inside it, lots of them, and they were waiting for her to go inside. At this point, for the first time since she first spotted the curious creature, fear began to overtake her. She turned and ran back the way she had come, not stopping until she had put a considerable distance between herself and this apparent alien lair. She would make her way straight home and try to make sense of the day's disturbing events. This description matches very well against the depiction of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh, Akhenaten. A pharaoh who, according to many ancient astronaut theorists, may have been a human alien 
hybrid, or at the very least, may have carried extraterrestrial genes. As unlikely as it might sound, could there be a connection between the strange creature in the Florida woodlands and one of the most mysterious pharaohs of ancient Egypt? Unable to put the events out of her mind, Frankovich would return to the location the following day. Once more, her two dogs accompanied her, and they seemed largely unaffected by the previous day's encounter. She began along the same track she had taken the day before, and to begin with, nothing out of the ordinary occurred. However, as she was making her way up a dirt track, she noticed a dark car that seemed to have appeared completely from nowhere, heading in her direction. It came to a stop just in front of her, and she could see two men sitting inside, each wearing a dark suit and dark glasses. One of the men motioned for Frankovich to come to the window, which she did cautiously. The man then asked her, matter-of-factly, whether she had seen anything strange in this part of the woods. She politely declined to answer the question, and asked who they were and for whom they worked. The man did not answer. Instead, he handed her what appeared to be a business card, although all it displayed was a raised gold emblem of the White House. The man then made small talk for several minutes, acting as if it was not at all strange that they should be driving along a secluded part of the Florida countryside. The men then thanked Frankovich for her time and drove away. In a similar way to how she had felt when standing outside the tunnel 24 hours earlier, she had a distinct feeling that the two men knew all about what she had seen the previous day. She also had the feeling that they knew a lot more than she did about the creature itself, what it was and why it was here. Following her encounter with the two unsettling men, Frankovich cut her walk short and returned home. She would keep both encounters to herself for several weeks before finally telling her husband, who would, with her permission, eventually send them to the little-known paranormal magazine. What should we make of Frankovich's experience? Florida is home to many accounts of strange creatures lurking in the vast wilderness of its marshlands, as well as many reports of UFOs. It is perhaps not too great a stretch of the imagination that otherworldly creatures could reside there, largely undetected by civilization. And what of the arrival of the two strange men? Men that appear to be none other than the men in black. Were they there on behalf of the United States government, as their business card suggested? Or do they report to another power, perhaps even the apparent extraterrestrials that would appear to inhabit the Florida marshlands? Could they even be a completely independent third entity in this fascinating and mind-blowing affair? Did Catherine Frankovich witness an extraterrestrial entity, and does her encounter provide evidence that beings from another world are not only visiting our planet, but might maintain a permanent presence here? A presence that could be known to certain elements of the United States government. <laughs>